to go. Whenever you want to hear my story, come see me. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Pikmin 4. Last episode, I revealed the progress of my training arc. I stepped out of the hyperbolic time chamber after having played Pikmin 1 and 2 in between two episodes ago and last episode. I am ready to throw down with this game. And today, we're going to start things off not by talking to any of the castaways, but by delving deeper into the optional lore within the menus. Starting with the rescue journal. We read the captain's diary last episode. A uh, very nice insight into Irma Shepard's uh, psyche. And now we're going to go into Sh the Shepard family history. It would seem that Shepard is really the main character here. <clears throat> Ooh, oh, that's... Oh, this is cool. This is Shepard's ancestors. Uh, man, okay. Thanks to the technology that has come from space exp exploration, our lives have grown much easier and far safer. And on planet rescue requests, and our on planet rescue requests have decreased dramatically. But as migration into space continues to grow, our services continue to be needed. So I'm happy to announce that we're extending our rescue services to the frontiers of space. We've done it. <clears throat> We've done it at last. We've flown to space. Out in this great, limited, limitless expanse, not a sound can be heard. And yet, I can still clearly hear the pounding of my own heartbeat. Space, how it overflows with possibilities. There can be no doubt. This is one giant leap forward for our kind. In space, too, there are those waiting to be rescued. My father told me this. It was his dream to travel to the stars and rescue those lost there. Though he passed his dream on to me, we have not been able to make it, make it come true. Hear me, my children and children's children. Make this dream a reality. We can transcend space and time, I'm sure of it. We will, we will soon welcome new rescue officers. That, that is, we've officially decided to add rescue pups to the team. We may not be able to exchange words with our canine partners, but we can build trust and understanding through careful training. I'm certain that the history books will remember the acute sense of smell as revolutionizing as our rescue work. I've always wondered when we as a species will um, make like uh, drug sniffing dog dogs obsolete. It's just kind of weird that with all the crazy technology that we have, one of those things isn't um, like a sense of smell, an artificial sense of smell. But from what I've researched, it's incredibly hard to replicate that. But that's just kind of cool. Maybe one day we'll have a, a fake bio, bio, biological sense of smell. Dr Ooh, drugs to increase your sense of smell? That'd be kind of sweet. Or also not, <laughs> on second thought. I have, like, a terrible sense of smell, so it's kind of fascinating to me. It'd be kind of cool if my sense of smell could be fixed. We aren't very good at reading emotions. Dogs, on the other hand, for some reason, they're much better at reading how folks feel and, of course, getting close to them. I got this idea that if we have the dogs sniff not just for the castaway's smell, but for their emotions, our rescue missions would, would improve by leaps and bounds. The Shepherd family has lived with dogs from the very beginning. We understand that if we love and respect those creatures as we do our own, if we pay attention and observe their behavior closely, then we can break down the walls between our species and truly understand one another. Beyond the sky itself lies a beautiful blue planet. Those words have been passed down from captain to captain, calling to each of us. I can't imagine what sort of place this blue planet might be, but it's said to be home to even more dogs and folks than we have here. One day, I hope to fly beyond the sky and into space. That's very strange. Considering our size relative to the dogs uh, on PNF-404, that were on PNF-404, and the fact that really the only dogs left here are in the grub dog family. Many years have passed since we first began to make this land our new home. Still, we need to we need more time to complete our environmental adaptations. In the meantime, we must survive so that one day we can pass down this new history to our children and pass down the ways we've learned to rescue and protect everyone. One day we will live here in peace. Very strange. It's kind of changing the story to uh, have Shepard 
This random member of our castaway party fulfilling some grand destiny. Not quite the meaning that I would expect from Pikmin. But then again, Pikmin has always surprised in its settings and with its, its undertones. Olimar, tell me your tale. Day four, and we're going back to the Sun Speckle Terrace. We have all the tools we need to complete this, so let's do it. Falling bomb rocks will fall again three days later? <laughs> what does that even mean? When have I ever seen a falling bomb rock? That's both terrifying or exciting. I guess it's a little bit of both. The Sun Speckled Terrace. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to complete this in one day. I'm going to have to use my recollection of how this area is supposed to go. Like, what is in this area to do it. But I know which directions we haven't been. So I'll get working on that. Let's start by taking out... Oh, well, let's start by plucking some Pikmin. Okay. By taking out yellows. I think 20 should do. I guess I could take out 20 of each. Yeah, let's take out 20... Actually, I haven't seen a use for blues yet, so let's take this split out. And then... We're going to... Yeah. Disband. I am going to take, or uh, Moss is going to take, I think the blues and the yellows, and go here. Olimar is going to go there. Take control of Moss, and I don't know if there's water past this. Also, thinking about it, Moss can't use the, uh, the sea stick whistle. Oh, Alright, that's gonna be something. I'm gonna grab... I'm gonna- I'm gonna switch out my blues for reds here. It looks like I'm going to need it. Okay, they're not gonna be done soon. I don't think that the Cloaking Baronet is gonna kill them. Uh, literally two. And then, we have an enemy to fight over here! Okay, I think I'm good in this cover. Make sure that they don't die over there. Prep a charge! Come on, Cloaking Baronet! Die. Oh, and this is an alternate base. That's super good. Hey, you. Come here. And now... Die. I have so much experience fighting these things because of my Pikmin 1 run. Unfortunately, they're a little bit tankier than they were ugh, in Pikmin 1. Get ready. Get the dash ready. That's what I should have thought of to begin with. There we go. Get that stun in. Get that stun in. Oh, if I had lined up a couple more of those bites. Get over here. Oh. Get ready. Throw. And dash. The cannon beetle is such a weird enemy. The fact that we have to throw a Pikmin into, like, the orifice in the front. Very odd, but cool. Still one of my favorites. I mean, I grew up fearing this thing. The exact amount of Pikmin needed to carry it? I mean, I guess it wouldn't have mattered as long as those Pikmin weren't with the Olimar. Ah! <laughs> Jump scared. Okay. They're there. Move. Also, let me... Oh, wait. Let me demonstrate this. I really wish it wasn't tied to the camera. That's super annoying, but it's... It's so nice having this. Die. Nice. Lost one. Use the right tool. Uh, I don't really care about carrying him back. I have a- I have a job to do here. Um... I'm not sure... Oh, there's a break there, so I need to be... I need to be up here, so Olimar needs to go back to base. Like, the new base. Yeah, actually, he's gonna go there, because for some reason there's a Pikmin over there. Uh, help. 
Okay. Very good. Now, what is... What is Ochi doing? Double check my map. I don't... I don't know if I need that. I also don't know how to get to that. I suppose I could probably do it from up here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go around the here. There's a Mamuta. Which I will have to kill. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Just because I'm killing you doesn't mean you're not my favorite enemy. Don't ever think otherwise. Again, perfect number. The plot armor coming in clutch here. Uh, switch just to get Olimar doing something. And then, oh, that was, oh, th that was a Pikmin from the, the plastic. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Olimar, can you, it looks like that one's just open air. Let's go get that. Okay, and then I can go through here and get the Nova Blaster. There we go. Should be pretty easy. You are not, you aren't nearly as tough as you were in Pikmin 1. Because for some reason in Pikmin 1, they both had a crazy amount of health and could kite you to the absolute oblivion. They were so aggressive in that game. It was great. <laughs> now they're just normal enemies. And you, as are you. Oh, did I throw him on the wrong side? No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. For a second, for a second, the depth perception kind of wigged out with me and I wasn't sure. Okay, 20? I think it, I think it weighed more in Pikmin 1. I mean, the base is a little bit, a little bit less rotund. What is happening? What is happening? Get on it. Thank you. <laughs> that was, yikes. Uh, okay, this is cleared out. We can't go, we can go there, I guess. But we're going to need... We're going to need moss to break that anyway. Okay. That, that's so much. But we have to do it. I wonder if this counts for completion's sake for building. I hope not. Yeah, we're going to need moss if only- yeah, to get the plastic. Hit me. You know, I haven't really talked- I haven't really addressed the fact that the Cloaking Baronet change, like, their weak spot is on their front now- or on their back now. Honestly, I think that makes a lot of sense. It was really weird for an enemy in Pikmin 2, and- yeah, Pikmin 1 as well, for their weak spot to just be rushing them normally. It was- it was very odd. It makes sense for it to be at the back now. Okay, we should have enough plastic now. Uh, we'll break this. Yep, get some more. One more. And honestly, we're we're pretty set here. Olimar's doing his thing. I guess we'll go that way. Yeah, because this this part was not open air. Nice. Libra. Or perhaps it's the other one. I forget what the other one actually is. Uh okay. Where... I think we have all the Pikmin we need over here, so... Moss... Oh, I guess I didn't... I could have knocked that down. I didn't. I chose not to. Go there. Hopefully I won't need blue Pikmin. They're about to be done. There are no Pikmin lazing around over there. What is over there? What is that? Just bricks and a pellet posy, which I don't care about. Is there even a part over here? What is the point of this? I'm, I just got really concerned. I realized I didn't do that. I did this for nothing. Okay, hopefully, hopefully there's a reason for it. Uh, one, two, three. It's probably plastic. We're just gonna set one. Probably should have been a yellow. We can move the base again. Kill kill. Please die. Okay. Looking good. More plastic. There's, there's a shit part over there. 
Olimar doesn't need the base anymore. Oh, I did snipe Pikmin from him. That's... That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to use the base to teleport here. You can die. I'll bite you. Not a fan of these guys. Die. Oh, you went underground. That was... That was a fatal mistake. Good. I needed yellows. Uh, you know what? Let's blitz this. Yeah, we're gonna blitz this. That way we can teleport everybody with the base since this area is entirely cleared out. We get another onion. So I could have gotten yellows day one. That's kind of neat. Uh, gonna have to kill you. Or, alternatively... Alternatively... No, you're gonna kill Pikmin. That's- that's not allowed. That's- that's illegal. Where are you? No, that's not okay. I was fine with you just living. I- I kinda just wanted to get... Get the onion and go, but nope, you had to make a big deal of it. Okay, so I don't need to build that. So really, all that's left is this. Which is gonna be a little bit scary here. And actually, I think it's gonna be faster. Because Olimar's busy. If I just order... Moss to go back the long way? Is there a way for me to get up there? Like, is it closed off? I'm not actually sure. I might not be able to get there. I'll still send Moss over there. Okay, so you're done. You're all we have. So, actually... Go back. I don't have enough to tackle that. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Moss. Nice. Nice. Okay, I don't know why I would need to kill... Why do I need to kill this? Why is this here? I'm kind of concerned that I'm missing a ship part in this area. I'm gonna have to go back. Like, that's really concerning to me. Yeah, you didn't have anything. Oh, you did! You did it! You did it! Okay, good, 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 good. Go! As fast as you can. And while you do, I'm going to investigate this. Those are broken. Can we even get up there? We cannot. So that's closed off. That's just straight up... Not a place where we go. Which makes me worry now. Um, do I need to break these? I probably do. I probably do. Run, run, run. I guess even if, even if they are in those pots, it's not going to, I'm not going to be able to do it in time. Although maybe I can, I'll move the base. I'll move the base as I go. That's the only way this is going to work. Dash one more time. I am headed the right way, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. If there's a ship... Like, the only... Only place I haven't searched is these pots. Oh, I wasn't able to do it in time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Do we get everything? There's no way to get up there. I checked that. I think we're good. I think we're fine. In which case, can I get any plastic in the little amount of time I have left? Uh, probably not. No, definitely not. No, this isn't another last frame situation. This is just not possible, and we're good. Maybe. I might have done it. It's hard to say. There was no, there was no blare, there was no fanfare, at least that I saw. I might have tuned it out. 
If so, we're on a great track here. We have like, what, 14, 15 parts done? So half halfway through this, this part of the game. I'm feeling like I'm in Pikmin 1 again, and that's one of my favorite Let's Plays, even though you go back and watch it and it didn't age the best. I kind of want to do it again <laughs> in a weird way. It's such a short game that like, what, it's, if I match my record for my last playthrough, it's 10 episodes. That's easy, you know? And it requires no work, but uh, we'll take a break from Pikmin after this Let's Play. 15 left. 10, 10 days left. 10 days left. Nice. So we are a third of the way through our time limit and halfway through the, the ship parts. And we got a bomb rock, another trackinator, which I should just use because they're bombs, emergency kit, tough stuff, and a parts detector. Good. That's going to be very useful. I wonder why the plants on this planet are so large in size when compared to the creatures. Perhaps in the far distant past there were, lived enormous creatures whose existence is simply beyond the, the stretch of my imagination. I'm screenshotting that? I'm recording this, I don't need to screenshot that. Uh, I'm, I am screenshotting that just because that adds credence to the theory that humanity is dead. Which this game kind of re- like, walked that back, but now it's walking it forward. Who knows? We might see people by the end of this game. Ten days left. 